Everyone seemed to really like the Spongebob characters iceberg I did the other week, so in this video I'm going to be covering even more characters, and I'm going to be going over their trivia, their background, their story. It's going to be crazy, and thank y'all so much for getting me to a thousand subscribers, it means the world to me. And if you want to keep that number going up, go for it, I'm, I'm not going to stop you, but other than that, let's get into the video. Abrasive Spongebob. In the episode The Abrasive Sponge, Spongebob goes around town accepting whatever requests people give to him, like going to Glove World with Patrick, running on a hamster wheel in Sandy's tree dome, and doing chores for Mr. Krabs. Spongebob eventually gets back to waiting in the Glove World line with Patrick, but then gets yelled at by his friend for saying yes to everyone and just getting too busy. Later that night, Spongebob comes home and cries on the sofa, been there, and Gary sees an ad on the TV and decides to order Spongebob a quote, abrasive side. When it arrives and Spongebob puts it on, there's another face on the other side of his head that's green, pessimistic, and just says no to everybody. Pretty much his new side goes around rejecting and yelling at all his friends, and they don't realize it's not Spongebob saying all that stuff, so they get really mad at him. At the end of the episode, Sandy notices what's going on and has Spongebob hold on to something heavy while she rips the abrasive side off of him. This is also like a reference to how, you know, normal sponges will have a rougher side on them, you know, like an abrasive side, crazy stuff. The Alarmfish make a brief appearance in the prehistoric-themed episode Ugg, and their whole role in the episode is just to scream and wake Spongebob up. They're these, like, big-ass whale-looking fish. They're probably some far-off ancestor, but honestly look like they took too much Xanax, but fair enough. Alexander Clam Bell is seen in the Cyclops novelty shop in the Spongebob movie's live-action portion. He's a clam that was turned into a knick-knack portraying Alexander Graham Bell, the inventor of the telephone but like as a clam with those signature googly eyes. He's the example that the Cyclops shows off to SpongeBob and Patrick of what'll happen to sea creatures in his shop. Alvin is Plankton's great uncle who only ever appeared in the official comic of Plankton Family Tree. All that's said about him is that he's from Plankton's mother's side of the family, and this is kind of morbid, but he hasn't been heard from in a while, and the last time someone saw him was, quote, his hat in a pool of ketchup. Anchor Arm Shark is the guy from the commercial that SpongeBob saw selling the inflatable arms that would make him seem way stronger than he is, and it was in the episode Muscle Bob Buff Pants. He's seemingly just talking straight to SpongeBob in the commercial, but he convinces him to buy the Anchor Arms, which, if y'all remember the episode, it doesn't actually make make him any stronger. It's just like a, a balloon arm. This anglerfish from the classic episode Rock Bottom is the only one who actually ever helped Spongebob out. He helps out by tying a balloon to Spongebob's wrist, which floats him all the way out of Rock Bottom. Throughout the episode, he's just seen blowing raspberries to talk like the other Rock Bottomites, but at the end of the episode, it's revealed that he could talk just fine when he says, you're welcome, to Spongebob as he floats back up to Bikini Bottom. Angry Jack is the manager for Angry Jack's Shell Emporium, and he appears in a TV advert being really angry while demanding people to buy his shells in the episode Shell Shock. Spongebob goes to the shop since he broke Gary's shell earlier in the episode, and it turns out that Angry Jack's a pretty nice guy up until Spongebob breaks all the shells in his store. To pay off what Spongebob broke, Angry Jack takes several limbs and an organ from Spongebob to pay for the damages, which, I mean, fair enough, but, you know, I mean, he, I, it's just Spongebob, man. Barnacle Bill is another character from the comics, this time a two-part story called The Ballad of Barnacle Bill. He's kind of like Seamus from Family Guy, but even more wooden, with all four limbs being wooden pegs, but also an entire body that's just like a tree stump and then a normal head. Okay, hold on, I kept reading the comic strip and this dude even has a wooden fucking brain and has brain damage from woodworms eating it just crazy this character was actually like a prototype for barnacle boy that would have taken his role in the show but the creators decided otherwise he also clearly resembles a popeye type of character and is actually human but has gained the ability to breathe underwater and in some other universe he would have just been a part of the spongebob roster of characters and i also forgot to mention he has a pet woodpecker named corky other than this comic book appearance he's only ever mentioned once by patchy in the episode party pooper pants Ben Blenny is another reporter for the Bikini Bottom News, just like Perch Perkins, but a lot less used in the show. He only cameos once in the episode Spongebob's Last Stand as a temporary stand-in for Perch, who is said to be out for the day due to indigestion. Big Lenny is this horrifying jellyfish drawing with a face on it who appears in the episode I'm Your Biggest Fanatic. He's displayed at the jellyfish convention by Dr. Manowar, who came to face the mysterious creature and left with a permanent sting on the side of his face that hurts every time he touches it. And of course, Patrick touches it after hearing this, you know. Big Mac the Bartender. This guy is really deep cut and only has like two sentences written about him on the wiki, but he's pretty much just the bartender who appears in the 2002 point and click adventure game, Employee of the Month. It's surprisingly a really highly rated game and pretty much follows the story of Spongebob getting an Employee of the Year award from Mr. Krabs, but he then receives a mysterious package in the mail with two tickets to Neptune's Paradise for a party. Most of the game is just Spongebob and Patrick's mishap filled journey trying to get there, but when they make it, it turns out it was a whole surprise party for him. As for Big Mac though, this is kind of just his only appearance. 
Hey, sorry for the interjection here. I just needed to let y'all know if this video gets 100 likes, I'll make a part two. Um, and if you want to subscribe, I mean, you're already here. You might as well. I make a lot of videos like this. They're really cool. They're really fun. Let's keep on going with the video. Somehow even more deep cut of a character. This is the black jellyfish, which is a species of jellyfish who only shows up in the DS version of the SpongeBob's Atlanta Square Pantis game. They don't really do much in the game, but just add some variety to the hostile mobs. That's about it, man. <laughs> Black Snail. This specific black snail appeared only in the episode One Crab's Trash. As Mr. Krabs is walking through the graveyard, he trips and sees this black snail that was walking in front of him. The snail is pretty much just the SpongeBob universe's representation of a black cat, which gives Mr. Krabs bad luck after spooking him, and it even arches its back up in fear like, you know, a regular cat would do. Bubble SpongeBob is just like, as the name implies, a bubble version of SpongeBob who actually shows up a good bit in the series. He debuts at Atlantis Square Panis at the beginning of the episode where SpongeBob and Patrick are in jellyfish fields blowing bubble versions of themselves, and pretty much the same thing happens also at the beginning of the Sponge Out of Water movie, where SpongeBob blows bubbles of himself and all his other friends. He appears one more time in the episode Gone, where all of Bikini Bottom leaves SpongeBob for a day, and he goes around blowing bubble versions of the other characters, including one for himself. Captain Magma is one of the superheroes who appeared in the episode Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy 5 as a member of the International Justice League of Super Acquaintances and he was known for shooting lava out of his head. Because the superhero had since passed on in the episode, Squidward had to fill the role of Captain Magma but we still got to see what he looked like from Spongebob's ILJSA lunchbox. He actually appears in the episode The Bad Guy Club for Villains in a flashback of the whole league fighting together. However, in this episode he has a different appearance as Professor Magma but it's said to still be the same person, just an experiment gone wrong at the time. Chip is one of Spongebob's inanimate friends in the episode I Had an Accident after he has to stay inside because he's worried he's gonna break his butt again. When Sandy and Patrick knock on the front door to try and get him to come outside, Spongebob throws Chip at the door who somehow even opens it. He's just a chip, I don't know, he figured it out somehow. Later on, Spongebob leaves the house and he tells Chip to take care of Gary who just eats Chip instead. Seriously, not much else to talk about here, man. It's just, it's just a chip. I, I don't know why you're still looking at me. Choking guy. There's seriously only one sentence about this guy on the Spongebob wiki because all he ever did was choke on something in the episode Lost in Bikini Bottom. That's about it. Craig Mamilton is the sun tanning obsessed seal that guest stars in the episode Sun Bleach. He throws this huge party for people that are only as tan as him so it's like racist to people who don't have skin cancer I guess. The end of the episode is really weird because they all do this like cult group tan that leaves them all left in piles of ash. His only other notable role in an episode is in The Whole Tooth as a customer who hears Patrick barking like a seal and then getting offended and leaving. I mean, understandable though. Along with that, he only has like a few cameos in the show, but he actually appeared in Camp Coral as a child and you get to see like child Craig Mamilton. Crazy stuff, I'm telling you. Administrator Flotsam. This guy's the administrator for the Bikini Bottom Hospital and he debuts in the episode The Lost Mattress, where he tells a doctor to move Mr. Krabs, who's in a cash coma, off of the sidewalk. He cameos a few other times in this series, but I personally only remember the episode The Ballad of Filthy Muck, where we see him in a bathroom stall at the Krusty Krab, where he now has a fedora on. Apparently now though, the majority of his appearances have just been in the Krusty Krab bathroom, which is a little odd, but I'll take it. Because Steven Hillenburg is the goat of cool, like, small details in the show, this character was named after the maritime term flotsam, which is the cargo part of the ship that would float up to the surface after a wreck. Al Gristlepuss. This guy is the chief of Bikini Bottom Police Department and has that classic, like, strong mustache cop look. His biggest role in an episode is in Band in Bikini Bottom, where his pain-in-the-ass wife demands that they shut down the Krusty Krab, because she's strongly opposed to, quote, fun and delicious foods. Mr. Krabs then is forced to open up shop again at SpongeBob's house, like, kinda on the down low. Regardless of that, though, Al's wife finds out what they're doing and sends a whole ass, like, Bikini Bottom SWAT team right on their house. It's crazy. Acting like it's like a meth lab or anything. I don't know. I've been watching too much Breaking Bad. He's also later kidnapped and used as a hostage by the Dirty Bubble later on. His character was designed after the show's casting director's late brother-in-law, who was also a cop. The art restorer is this old lady who was never given a name, but features in the episode Insecurity Guards. In this episode, Spongebob and Patrick are going around the Bikini Bottom Museum of Everything when they bump into the art restorer who shows them how to do her job. Which is pretty nice, but as she's doing so, Patrick complains that it's taking too long and just grabs Spongebob and rubs his ass all over the painting, which wipes the whole thing clean. This quite literally just breaks the lady's mental and she runs out of the museum just absolutely insane, laughing. It's, it's, yeah, it happens. 
balding guy. This guy whose name is unknown so far pretty much just appears as a sad old man who takes people's pictures. He first appears in picture day trying to get a picture of Spongebob for Mrs. Puff's boating school, but Spongebob keeps crying and I'd be mad at him for this, but like, I don't think there's a single picture of me smiling up until probably high school. Just not my thing, you know, but that's all right. His other big role is in Model Sponge as the director of the new Sponge commercial and he even requests that Spongebob strip naked for the shoot. Barbara is another anger fish for the Bikini Bottom News who honestly, I'll say it, baddest fish in Bikini Bottom by far. I love her so much. In the episode The Krusty Sponge, she and Bob, another news reporter, introduce Gene Scallop and his official critics review of the Krusty Krab. She appears a few other times just as another reporter for the news, but she never actually has like a big role in an episode. Hopefully my girl can get one of those this time, uh, but she got to get like a guest star. Bird is just kind of Bikini Bottom's deadbeat background character. The only time he's ever seen in the show is asking his friend Bill to lend him money for ice cream. And then he's also seen later on at the Electronics Outhouse, I don't know, kind of minor, but he looks cool, I guess. Mohawk Brute 2, or also known as Mac, is this massive fish who's definitely listening to Suicide Boys here, but like in the best way possible. I, I wish I could be that cool, man. I I'll get there someday. He actually shows up a lot in the show. Usually he's just like a stereotypical buff dude, and his debut is in the episode Shanghai, where the Flying Dutchman tries to scare him, but bro isn't even phased by this, which is crazy. In Krabby Land, SpongeBob for some reason chooses this guy to help stall the children, and he calls his counterpart Muscle Brute 1 to come help with him as well. Bob Preflumster is the other anchorman I mentioned earlier when talking about Barbara. He also works for the Bikini Bottom News and he's usually seen reporting alongside Barbara, but I think in the episode Pineapple Fever, he's seen on SpongeBob's TV announcing a tornado that's headed straight for Bikini Bottom. However, he definitely doesn't show up as much as Perch Perkins, so he's just like another one of those replaceable news anchor characters. Bikini Bottom Sanitation Police. These guys are like a subunit of the town's police department and don't really seem to be that much different from the regular police other than wearing a pair of green sunglasses. They appear in the episode Sentimental Sponge to clean up and sanitize SpongeBob's house after he becomes like a hoarder and they mark his house off like a whole ass crime scene. Blue Kid Fish. This guy is used mostly just as another background child fish character. He debuts in the episode Krabby Land during a cutaway of Mr. Krabs imagining a child running with a pocket full of money, potentially to spend at the Krusty Krab, of course. I'm just gonna rapid fire off a few of his appearances here, like in Mermaid Man vs. Spongebob, along with a bunch of other children at a superhero event, in Whatever Happened to Spongebob in New Kelp City with a different yellow character model, but with his mom, in Toy Store of Doom waiting in line for the entrance of the new toy barrel, and also in Hello Bikini Bottom at another kid's birthday party. Really just kind of background fish guy. Brad Ted is used for several different episodes, but what makes me remember him the most is in Slimy Dancing as a judge for the Dance-a-thon, or in the episode Gary in love as the long lost boyfriend of the twist ending. He even makes an appearance in the Patrick Star show advertising Pappy Farms to the Star family. Brown Hat Fish. This is the guy from the episode Something Smells who runs away after SpongeBob tries to say hello to him in the theater, but his breath is just that bad. Other than that, he appears a few different times as the super depressed looking middle aged man, so like Christian dad, but in 30 years. Charles is this old sailor dude who comes to the Krusty Krab to warn SpongeBob and Patrick about the bikini bottom triangle, and he explains that it's this mysterious fog where mermaids can be heard singing inside, but once you get close enough, anyone will be sucked into the triangle and unable to escape. Even with the warning, Spongebob and Patrick go out to see the triangle and leave Charles at the restaurant to be a substitute fry cook. Surprisingly though, according to Spongebob lore here, he's one of the few characters in the show that have ever actually been seen to be as good as Spongebob or even better, because Spongebob came back and he really liked Charles' Krabby Patties. Chubby Customer. This guy is a resident in New Kelp City, but he's mostly just seen eating at the Krusty Krab and he's never given a name, so the wiki just says Chubby Customer. He orders a monster Krabby Patty in the episode All That Glitters, and he also appears again right before one of those nasty ass close-up scenes with Spongebob, where Spongebob asks him if he's okay, and it's just... yeah. Dougie Williams is that whack-ass clown guy from the episode Squirrel Jokes, and I'm really hoping y'all remember this guy. During the Comedy Crab stage show, he's the first talent up and says, good evening, folks, I'm gonna skip the jokes and get right to the part where I throw pies at you, and he just, you know, throws pies at the audience, which is comedy gold. Other than this, he only appears one other time at the mall, standing in the background when Pearl's there shopping, just standing there, I don't know. Dr. Celine is this kind of sadistic green doctor fish from the episode The Lost Mattress. When Mr. Krabs is just laying there on a stretcher in a coma in front of the candy vending machine, this guy asks another doctor if he can be removed from there so he can put him out on the sidewalk, but still in a coma. He does in the end get his nutty nut bar, so no worries though. He's also seen in Demolition Doofus, frantically pushing the fin back fish into the hallway to get him to a demolition derby that's happening inside of the hospital for some reason. Fair enough. 
Klaus. Sadly, this isn't Klaus from American Dad making a cameo in SpongeBob, which would be awesome, but it's actually just a German kid who's seen in a couple different episodes. In Krabby Land, he's seen as one of the kids that Mr. Krabs is spying on, and he's seen biting into an orange lollipop. He even has a much more recent appearance in the Patrick Star Show, where he has a new orange model, and he somehow mails himself inside an envelope to the Patrick Star Show's, like, mail segment. Frank is the owner of the Palace of Pranks store, and is said to be a master of pranks, making a living by helping other pranksters get their start. In the episode, pranks a lot, Frank shows off a bunch of different prank items to Spongebob and Patrick, like a joy buzzer, exploding chewing gum, a fake dollar, a whoopee cushion, fake vomit, real vomit, and then finally the invisible spray which he sells to them, which is, you know, it's the point of the episode later on. I guess the Palace of Pranks isn't super successful, because later on in the episode You Don't Know Sponge, he's seen working his second job as a cashier for the magic shop. Frederick T. Nitpick is an art critic who goes through Bikini Bottom looking for up-and-coming talent in the episode The Googly Artiste. He stops by Squidward's house, who shows off his art, but Nitpick isn't really a big fan. SpongeBob then shows off a birdhouse he made, but Nitpick still isn't impressed. Then he goes over to Patrick's house and sees his art, which is just a rock with a bunch of googly eyes sloppily glued onto it, and the critic is just taken aback by this and pays Patrick $500 on the spot for his creation. Gene Scallop is a food critic who works for the Bikini Bottom News and hosts a TV segment called Bottom Feeding with Gene Scallop, doing things like Guy Fieri style, like some divers, drive-ins, and dines type shit. In the episode The Krusty Sponge, he goes to review the Krusty Krab and his first impressions are as follows. Barbara, once I stuck my beak through that door, my appetite flew south for the winter. I mean, I'm not kidding. When I saw this restaurant, it smelled like the rear end of a goat. However, by the end of his review, his outlook on the restaurant is completely changed as he praises the Krusty Krab for its Krabby Patties, but he's especially enamored by SpongeBob, who he suggests Mr. Krab should make the whole focus of the restaurant. After this though, Mr. Krabs tries selling these expired patties that weren't refrigerated because they look like sponges. And he gets taken to court over this, where we see Gene Scallop again as one of the jurors who votes for Mr. Krabs to be guilty because, you know, he sold sponge patties, which made people sick, and that might, that's probably a crime. Glove World Owner. Glove World is like the SpongeBob universe's main theme park, and it's visited a few times in the show, like in the beginning of Rock Bottom, but in the episode Glove World R.I.P., SpongeBob and Patrick visit to see their favorite amusement park is shutting down for good soon. When getting there, they meet this extremely depressed Glove World owner dude who gives Patrick his hat to use his pants because he was just kind of naked and explains that Glove World is going to shut down, but they still have one last day to get all the experiences and rides once more. Later on in the episode, the park's glove mascot gets kicked by a kid and quits the job, prompting the Glove World owner to give Patrick the job for the day temporarily. At the end of the episode, he shows up again when SpongeBob and Patrick chain themselves to the park in protest, but he explains the only reason Glove World is shutting down is so he can open the new and improved Glove universe. He actually plays the role of an antagonist in the browser game SpongeBob's Next Big Adventures. In it, he straight up kidnaps Sandy for Glove World's new deep sea squirrel exhibit and has to fight off SpongeBob with his massive glove spider robot. When Spongebob beats him, of course, he frees Sandy and puts the Glove World owner, like, in Sandy's little cage. Uh, looks like a, just a great game, really. Grandma Granny is this badass grandma who's a part of Johnny Krill's group called the Drasticals in the episode Extreme Spots. We get like a whole ass highlight reel for her in which she's seen doing a skydive into a sand mound, go down it on a shellboard, do some flips, and fall into a cannon that shoots her back up into the hang glider, of course with a bunch of explosions in there as well. This is her only appearance in the show, even if she looks like a bunch of other old characters, because they use the same model every now and then, and it's like that old lady, big gray hair, all that fun stuff. Mr. Fritz is a member on the board of boating, which makes him kind of like Mrs. Puff's boss. He first appears in the episode Mrs. Puff, You're Fired, where he comes into Mrs. Puff's boating school to check in on her class after seeing the absurd number of failed boating tests at her school. The vast majority of these, however, are all from SpongeBob, who failed his test 1,258,056 times in total. Because of this, he fires Mrs. Puff and replaces her with Sergeant Roderick, who I'll talk about in the following video if y'all enjoy this one, maybe some more SpongeBob characters. Mr. Fitz shows up later in the episode where Spongebob destroys all of Bikini Bottom after having a new teacher, so he decides to rehire Mrs. Puff. He appears in one other episode, Life Insurance, selling an ad on TV to Spongebob. I guess boating didn't really work out for him. Health Inspector Yellowtail. Hopefully everyone that's still watching this video is going to recognize the Health Inspector from the just unforgettable episode, Nasty Patty. He shows up to the Krusty Krab looking to inspect their restaurant, but during the visit, Mr. Krab sees a report on TV saying there's been a fake inspector going around getting free food, and Mr. Krabs just assumes that it's this guy. 
because of this, he has SpongeBob create the most horrifying, disgusting Krabby Patty possible, dubbed the Nasty Patty. However, when the health inspector is about to take a bite of the patty, a fly makes its way down his throat and starts straight up choking him to death, and, and nobody helps because you think it's, you know, the shocking taste of the Krabby Patty. When they realize dude just completely died, Mr. Krabs and SpongeBob panic and take the body to a graveyard just to realize he's not completely dead, and then they take him back to the Krusty Krab to put his barely alive body inside the freezer. Later in the day, SpongeBob goes into the freezer to get more ice, but the health inspector is gone and Spongebob just assumes he became a zombie. The health inspector turned out to be alive and made a full recovery, then somehow gave them a passing grade on the inspection because he wasn't a faker. I can't lie to y'all, when I was little my mom saw me watching this episode and it was just too dark and, and I was banned from watching Spongebob for several months, um, just completely changed who I am as a person. Horace A. Whopper is a judge of Bikini Bottom and he's most recognizable from that like 1700s white wig. He debuts in the episode The Krusty Sponge and is the judge overseeing the people versus is Eugene Crabb after he sold the patties that had gone bad and made everyone sick. He shows up one other time in the episode The Patty Caper as a judge, this time sentencing Mr. Krabs to give away free patties for a whole day after punishment for stealing his own formula. I don't know. I, I didn't watch the episode. I, I, I don't know. Horace B. Magic is the voice and pretty much puppet master behind Mr. Magic, a famous magician in Bikini Bottom. He does this to sell Mr. Magic's magic kits, which Spongebob buys in the episode Hocus Pocus. He accidentally turns Squidward into an ice cream cone with a magic wand. He didn't actually though, but don't worry. Then he goes to see Mr. Magic so he'll turn Squidward back. However, they soon find this Horace guy hiding behind a curtain speaking into a microphone for Mr. Magic. Turns out the whole thing is just this businessman trying to sell magic to people. Horace also shows up again in the episode Krusty Catering at Miss Mildred's mansion swinging on a chandelier in the food fight. Mr. Seaweed Monster Man is, um this thing. He's only referenced in the episode That's No Lady, where Patrick is trying to create a new identity for himself and suggests using the name Mr. Seaweed Monster Man. But SpongeBob points out that this guy already exists, and Mr. Seaweed Monster Man just like walks into frame saying hi to both of them. Judge Stokoback is another judge in Bikini Bottom, this time for the episode Krabs vs. Plankton, and she resides over the two in court. Plankton is trying to sue Mr. Krabs for his injury when falling in the Krusty Krab because there wasn't a wet floor sign in place of the puddle. After telling a fake story about his Graham Graham, the judge begins to show Plankton some compassion, but in the end, after questioning everyone, she finds Mr. Krabs not guilty and just dismisses the case. Jack M. Crazyfish is the main antagonist in the episode Black and Sponge. He first appears in SpongeBob's dream, attempting to stop SpongeBob from rescuing a lady tied down to the train tracks. When he wakes up, he tries to open his toothpaste, but manages to give himself a black eye and has to quickly come up with a less embarrassing story as to how he got the black eye when people ask at work. Instead of something believable, he pretty much just tells everyone what happened in his dream as an explanation. It turns out this Jack M. Crazy Crazy Fish guy actually exists, and he comes into the Krusty Krab later that day after hearing everyone say he gave someone a black eye. Which surprised him, because he's not like that bad of a guy, he still fights Spongebob in a rock, paper, scissors after the end, because like Spongebob spills some Krabby Patties on him, and he loses, and he gets his ass kicked. It's a fun time, but that's about it. I appreciate y'all for watching the whole video since you made it here. Um, I can't say how thankful I am for y'all getting me to like 1500 subscribers. It is really crazy. Yeah, I, I, I'm just really thankful for all the support. And if y'all have any video topics or ideas, just let me know. Any criticism, say it. I mean, but that's about it. So y'all enjoy the rest of your day.